guys. I'm coming at to you today on Monday, June 6, 2022. And the reason why I'm commemorating this date is this is Once Upon a Crime's anniversary. I launched Once Upon a Crime on June 6, 2016. So this is anniversary number six and begins our season number seven. So that to me is huge. Um, we're already at episode number 244 releasing today. So 244 episodes of Once Upon a Crime are already produced and out in the ether. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's not something that I thought really thought a lot about before I did. Um, I mean, I planned the podcast, but I didn't anticipate or have an expectation of how long it was going to go. I just knew I always wanted to do it. I just knew that um, I would keep doing it because I enjoy it. But uh, this has been way above and beyond expectations, which did if I even had any expectations to begin with. But um, it's pretty amazing. And I want to thank all of you guys for those of you who've been with me at the beginning, those of you who found me somewhere along the way or just recently found the podcast, I really appreciate it. It would not be um, this successful without you. So you are a big part of Once Upon a Crime, no matter where you fit into the equation. So I appreciate that. Um, that being said, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of uh, information about what's coming up and what we're doing and how things are going uh, really quickly here. Because I haven't done a video in a while. It has been a crazy few months um, with the Crime Con happening in Las Vegas and getting ready for that. That was huge, huge event. Um, you guys probably saw some of the videos um, online or on our social media. Uh, and then on Thursday, um, just like four days from now, I will be heading to CrimeCon UK, so in London. So uh, that's another. So in between, there was kind of a crunch time of getting everything done, scripts done, recording done, um, getting things scheduled to release while I'm gone. Um, and that has been really great. We've been able to work ahead and have a lot of things in the can, as they say, if they say that, I don't know if they say that, <laughs> but ready to go for you guys. So you don't uh, have to wait or have, I have to you know, have a hiatus or anything like that while um, I'm traveling. So that has been great. But season seven, so we're at season seven and we're starting, like I said, starts today. The topic, if you guys have not seen it yet, if this goes out before um, that episode releases or before you see the episode in your uh, in your feed, is uh, called Picture Perfect Murder. And what that is, this is one that I had planned to do a long time ago. It's been on my list a long, for a long, long time. Uh, I'm glad I waited because I found some newer, I wouldn't say newer, but maybe, maybe newer, but more um, uncovered cases. And the what the the theme is, is uh, photographers or uh, models who are involved in true crime. So, um, and sometimes photographers and models. So um, there are some that I think people know really well, like Harvey Glattman and uh, Rodney Alcala. Is that name? Rodney Alcala? Am I saying that right? Yeah, I think so. I don't remember off the top of my head with everything else in my head. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and those I think I had on the list way early, but I decided, you know, those have been covered a lot, and um, maybe I'll look for something a little bit uh, less well-known, and I found some pretty interesting stories. So that starts today, um, and I think that you guys are going to like that. Um, and then, just to give you a heads up, okay, so what I want to tell you now is this video is going to go out on Patreon, but it's also going to go out on our social media. There's going to be a part that I'm going to edit um, out and I'm just going to give it to you guys on Patreon. So if you want to know what was edited out, um, which is this kind of the sneak peek of all the topics, come, you know, it, until the fall, um, go to Patreon and uh, get it there. So, uh, so, okay. So if you're not on Patreon, uh, there's a quick break, but I'll, I've got more information to share to you in just a second, but, um, after this, this bit. Okay. So everybody's back now. I've always been a big, uh, you know, music fan and a big, uh, you know, rock and roll music fan, among other types of music as well. But so I just wanted to say so one of the things that I just did, you know, just just a personal personal story for things I've been doing. You know, like I said, it's been really busy, really hectic, uh, crunch time, you know, on and on. But, you know, months and months ago, I knew that uh, 
that um, Bottle Rock, which is the, one of the big music festivals here in Northern California that happens in Napa every year, was uh, going to be, you know, held. Um, and so each day they have, you know, a whole lineup of bands and stages and all that kind of stuff. You guys, you know, who've gone, gone to these kind of things, day-long things or weekend-long things know, know what that's like. Um, so it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's no way I could take three days <laughs> away from work and, and scheduling and recording and all that stuff. But, you know, the every night there's, you know, one, one or two main head, headliners, right, for, uh, for the festival. And Friday night was going to be Metallica. Now, I've seen them, so, uh, you know, more than a few, more than a couple times. Um, but I always try to catch them when I can, when they're, when, you know, they're in the area. So, um, there are, you know, uh, local boys that gone good, you know, although they're from everywhere, but, you know, they kind of uh, started out here um, in, uh, you know, San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, some of them still live in this area. And, uh, yeah, so I thought, well, that'd be great, because I have not been to, like, an all-day outdoor music festival, like, for a long time. It's, it's, I just don't have time. It's a lot. It's so much more expensive now, you guys know. Um, it's, you know, so it's an investment of time, money, energy, uh, everything. So I, but I said, yeah, I want to, I want to do that. So I went just for the, just for the Friday. So got up there, drove up to Napa. It's about a two hour drive or so from where I live. Um, went up to Napa and, uh, you know, got an Airbnb, um, <clears throat> at this kind of resort condo place that's, that's there up there. And, um, you know, just kind of hung out that night before and then got ready the next morning and went to the festival, which opened, I think, at noon. Um, stayed, you know, till Metallica played like at 8 p.m. and they were done about 10, 10 30 ish, and I drove two hours home, um, back to San Jose. So it was so fun. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you can just kind of cut loose and have a good time and, you know, all of that stuff. So it was great. It was really fun. I found some other, um, artists there that were performing that I really liked too. So that was cool to come, you know, come back and put it on my, my playlist and stuff like that. But yeah, it was really, really, really cool. So a little glimpse of when I do have a little bit of off time, which was, you know, like I said, very short, but um, I needed it. I really needed kind of the time to just let loose and and uh, just enjoy myself for a day. And uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, okay, what else? What else, what else, what else? Okay, uh, like I said, season seven, episode 244 comes out today. Um, Thursday I leave for CrimeCon UK, which is going to be amazing. Two days, Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Um, and hopefully you guys, if you have tickets, you know, make sure to come out to Podcast Row. It, the first year for CrimeCon UK, well, the first year, it was actually last September um, because it got postponed. But now, you know, it's now in the summer. And uh, if, I, if you guys are coming, make sure to come see me. It's, uh, it's If you've been to other crime cons, at least recently, they're a lot bigger. Um, but we're still very accessible, the podcasters are, and really everybody is, uh, for the most part. So um, I don't know, like some, a lot of the people that are coming to um, CrimeCon UK, I've heard of them, but I don't know them because I don't know them as well as I know the, the experts and, and, and legal people or whatever in true crime in the U.S. versus the U.K. So it's a lot of things that I'm hoping that I will be able to, you know, meet people and learn about what they do and, and all of that. I will tell you at CrimeCon Las Vegas, I didn't get to see anything, not one session. Oh, oh, I'm lying. <laughs> in in the pod in the where Podcast Row was, which is a huge ballroom, at the front of it, I was in the in the back. My table was in the back, but at the front there was a stage. So a couple of things that were there, which was like the podcast studio, the like podcast stage, I got to see. So I got to see Jen Y talking to Bob Ruff from Bob Ruff from Truth and Justice. I got to see uh, Jen Y talking to. Um, True Crime Garage, uh, so that was cool because those are all my friends. Bob Ruff, I, Bob Ruff, I've seen him around and I didn't get to meet him until this time, which he's he's wonderful. He's I, I knew he would be. I mean, he's just amazing, amazing heart, uh, amazing, uh, you know, just a crusader for justice, and uh, I really liked him. So we had we had a, a a nice conversation, and you know, had a beer together and stuff. So it was really fun. Um, but I did get to see a lot of people at CrimeCon UK, um, uh, Affirmative Murder, you know, my buds from Maryland. I've never met them in person until this time, so that was great. Fran, uh, Fran and Alvin got to spend some time with them. We all hung out together with Billy Jensen, um, having drinks after the, the 
conference floor, you know, just out in the hotel lobby where listeners can come up and, and, and talk and hang out. And so that was really fun. Uh, of course, Erica from uh, Southern Fried Chicken Crime was there. I hadn't seen her in a long time. So I might have said some of this. I don't remember. But <laughs> I can't remember anything, you guys. Um, but yeah, so that was really fun. And uh, oh gosh, so so many other people, uh, the Wendy and Beth from Fruit Loops. Um, who else? Oh my gosh, uh, Dark Poutine, Mike from Dark Poutine. I got to see. Uh, oh oh my gosh, um, my brain. You guys, it, it's sad when you <laughs> when you produce a podcast every week where you're reading and writing and recording and getting going on to the next whole other. Um, you know, episode, which is completely different from the last one, it's like your brain just starts to fry. Like, just remembering, I can remember the details of the stories I'm telling, um, and then I do, I do the episode, and then, like, two or three weeks later, if somebody says, oh, you know the episode you were talking about, such and such, I'm like, what? Like, what did I talk about? And well, which one are you talking about? Like, I have no recollection unless you jog my memory, or I look at something that says, oh, yeah, 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 I remember now. Um, it's crazy. It's so crazy. But uh, military murder, you know, Margo from military murder. I don't know why, because, you know, she's, she's amazing. And I love Margo. Um, and so I got to see her. Um, it's, it was just such a whirlwind, you guys, uh, of, of activity and people and talking and <laughs> that it was, it was a little bit overwhelming, but so fun. So, so fun. Um, and, but yeah, I didn't get to see any of the sessions at all. Luckily they give us the virtual login so I can go back when I have a chance, which I have not had yet to watch some of them. I definitely wanted to see some, I really was interested in the John Ramsey, what, like what did he have to say about the John Bidet Ramsey case or, you know, what's going on. I got to talk to some people and hear from some people who did see it. And they said, they're a little disappointed that there was nothing new in it. I don't know if and that was their perception. I, I haven't watched it yet. So I, 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 when I do watch it, I will give you guys my perception of it, um, of what he said. But I do know that he was there with somebody who's kind of like um, an advocate for him, if you want to call it that, wrote a book, you know, basically saying that the parents had nothing to do with it. And, um, you know, this was an intruder um, that killed John Bonet and all of that, um, which, you know, I mean, who am I to know? But of course, we all have our our opinions and our theories. Um, and I thought it was brave of him to be there and to talk about his pain and his grief, because no matter what happened, there's definitely, you know, a, a you know, truckload of pain and grief there for sure. Um, and loss and all of that. So, um, you know, I thought it was brave of him to be there as long as many, many years later, but you know, geez, that's tough. Um, but I don't know, I guess, I didn't really know what to expect, and I still don't, but from what I heard from people, they were like, yeah, it, he kind of just said the same thing, and it was just kind of not a lot of detail about, you know, I guess maybe being able to give his side and really, I don't know, give something different with them, say, oh, well, I didn't know that, so that makes more sense that why they probably weren't involved or something like that. Apparently, that's, that's kind of the... Uh, the gist I've been getting from listening to other people, which probably shouldn't even be talking about because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, uh, watched his, his talk yet, but I did uh, read some clips and, of things that he said and what the interview questions that he was asked and stuff, which seemed like a little bit, of course, rehearsed um, to kind of make it more one, it made it more one-sided apparently. Um, but anyway, I'll let you know when I do get to do that. Uh, what else? What else? Um, I know there was something else. So that, uh, crime. oh, I know. So things are really, uh, growing behind the scenes here at Once Upon a Crime. If you guys know, if you've been here from the beginning, it's basically been me, was me and me and me and me and me until about your, I want to say Lorena would know she's not here, two or three where Loretta came on board and became, you know, really helpful to me doing a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, you know, started out just kind of office help and then worked into, um, you know, doing social media, some social media for me. Um, now, and then now doing, you know, helping me produce the show with, you know, audio and, and everything that goes into the technical part of it, which is amazing to get that kind of help. 
Um, the one thing that I didn't have, you know, research, of course, helping with research, um, one thing I didn't have was anybody else doing the writing, which takes the biggest part of my time, which is the part that really fries my brain. <laughs> Because I love being able to tell a story, but sitting down to write out each script, which I have to do in order to be able to, I feel like, tell it in, in a way that really gets across the story I'm trying to, I'm trying to, as I'm trying to convey it without a lot of tangents or missteps or mistakes or whatever, um, is a lot. Um, you know, thousands and thousands of, of words a week that I write, um, and it takes... I can't even, I don't even know, to be honest, how many hours to write each script. I really don't know because it's really hard to just sit and just write all the way through. Um, it's just, it's very, very exhausting. So mentally and physically. So, um, so I finally, you know, I've, I've, I've found a couple of people to, to help out. We're just starting that. You guys will hear, I will give credits at the end of the site, you know, say if they, you know, you know, um, assistance in writing this or written by, because some of it, it may be written by other people. Uh, for the most part, I will always edit everything a little bit just if for my voice, um, the way that I tell a story. But I think I've, I think I've been, you know, pretty lucky in getting some help here. It's not an easy thing to do to have other people write for your voice, especially since it's so well established, like I said, <laughs> six years. So to get somebody totally different that would sound totally different from the way I would tell a story probably wouldn't work. Um, so it's, it really was a, a journey to find, and I'm, you know, and it still is, we're still in the process, but I think we're getting closer. Now, that being said, the reason why that's so important is because then I'll be able to do other projects. Like I'm able to do like a whole offshoot um, podcast, like a series, like a, like a um, and, and there's a couple that I have that I really want to cover, um, but it's going to take six or eight or 10 episodes to tell the story. And I would love to do that, you know, a series, the standalone series podcast, you know, like Once Upon a Crime presents this case or whatever. Um, and I get lots of um, offers for projects that I just don't have time for. Um, some of them, you know, they don't quite fit into what I do at Once Upon a Crime. They're not really quite kind of fit. So it's easy to say no to. Some other ones, if you'd like that, great, but there's just no way I have time. Um, so this will free up some of that. Now, that being said, uh, there is one project, and I'll give you guys more of the details. I don't think I'm uh, totally able now to, you know, announce anything while I don't have details, all the details. But just to say this, that um, I will be uh, behind the camera. I'm front, no. I'm sorry, in front of the camera. <laughs> See, I don't even know the lingo. <laughs> and actually being uh, something that is going to be televised. Um, a couple of somethings. So that's really kind of nerve wracking and exciting. And um, I don't know what to expect. I've never done that. Except for you guys here in my studio in front of my little, you know, uh, Logitech or whatever <laughs> camera. Um, so this will be like a real deal, man. This will be like a real show with real people that you will probably recognize um, and then and true crime related. So that's all I can say right now, but I will give you guys the details when I know them better and when I have dates for things and stuff like that. So yeah, well, and hopefully, you know, hopefully, I mean, and, and I don't know how television works. Like I assume that this is going to be something that we know is going to be out there at some point. I don't know how long. I don't know if it's like in a few months. I don't know if it's in a year. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I will find out more um, next week. So um, as I find out things, I'll let you guys know. But that's something to look forward to. And you know, there may be other projects in the future. I have known this for a while now, even though I've kind of not really opened my eyes all the way wide to it, that uh, Once Upon a Crime is becoming bigger than me. Um, and it's ju it just is. Uh, it's kind of one of those things when those of you who are parents, I think I've, I've used this analogy before. It's like when you have your kids and you're like, they're your kids and they're, you're, you're with them 24 seven, you know, pretty much unless, you know, either with babysitter when you go to work or whatever. Um, but when you have to let them go to like go to school and you're like, no, I'm not ready for that. You know, it's like, you're, it's like you, you're, you're somehow relinquishing control, even though you're not, I mean, you know, in, 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 in some way you are. Um, and it's scary. 
and uh, you want it to go well and you want it to still be the way that you would do things because, you know, this is your baby. Um, but you also know that uh, things grow and evolve and you really don't have control over everything. So you have to, and that's the way, you know, things can improve and, you know, grow and launch other things and all that. And I'm excited about that. It is a little bit uh, nerve wracking in some ways. It's also very exciting. Um, and yeah, and it'll, you know, to me, I'm always like when I'll do what I feel like the part that I should be doing and the rest, I don't have expectations for. If it goes, it goes. If it's, you know, whatever, I'm just going to do my part the best way I can. And uh, hopefully, you know, it'll be something I can be proud of at the end result. That's, that's all I care about. Um, and what comes of it is not, you know, it's, it's not my control. Um, but yeah, it's great. It's, it's really kind of cool. So once again, I just want to say, you guys, I really, really appreciate all the listeners, uh, Patreon members, those who are follow us on social media, those who reach out and uh, give us comments, feedback. Um, you know, we have been going through a little bit of growing transition and stuff. There are things that we're still working on, some things that I feel like we need to tweak a little bit um, because, like I said, we've kind of give, given um, some of the post-production over to a uh, network that we work with, Studio 71, and they've been doing an awesome job and they're amazing to work with. Um, but yeah, there's still some things that, I mean, I'm picky, Lorena's picky. <laughs> and we're just like, uh, you know, uh, still tweaking because there's some things we think, yeah, you know, this is what the listeners expect. This is what we expect. We want it this way. And if we need to make some changes um, as it evolves, we will do that. Um, so we appreciate the feedback, letting us know what you think works, what you think needs to be improved, what things you'd like to see, what thing, you know, all of that. And it, it really is helpful because uh, we know what we think, but we always want to know what you guys think too, because like I said, couldn't do it without you guys. So thanks so much. Uh, I'm going to sign off, but like I said, I'll be going to London um, and I will be there by myself. Loren is not going with me this time. I'm hoping to be able to get some things uh, you know, videotape to get to you guys, uh, pictures and things like that. It's going to be a little trickier on my own, but um, I will figure out how to do selfies. <laughs> I'll figure out how to set up my little camera um, and do some videos and uh, yeah, it'll be cool. So um, thanks you guys. And if I'm, if you're in London, come by, say hi. I can't wait to meet you and it's going to be awesome. So I hope you, um, and if you're going to travel there, safe travels. Um, I will be in the, in the air on Thursday night to Friday morning and then landing on Friday. And uh, yeah, can't wait. It'll be fun. So thanks again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.